y'all welcome back to the channel if you are new here my name is marina yeah you have to sing it when you say it like that we're gonna be working on this plain area in the cabinetry in the double wide today it's basic it's plain i can play with it however i want to it's practically a blank canvas and there are so many things i can do with this so we're gonna do something with it but before we do that we're going to make some dinner get some dinner going in the crock pot i'm always looking for new ideas for dinner around here because my kids kiddos do try new things they're sort of picky but not really picky they will at least try something but if they don't like it they don't care to tell me they don't like it and I wouldn't want it any other way if my kids don't like something I want to know about it Shane likes to try new things too and Shane really likes roast so I thought I might try a roast recipe that I found on the Pinterest I believe the original poster called it cowboy sandwiches. If I can find the original post, I will link it down below. But I'm making this recipe my own and I'm not following it to a T. Because girlfriend called for jalapenos and I never had a jalapeno in my life. The closest thing I've got to a jalapeno is a jalapeno Cheeto. And I know that's not the same. <laughs> so we're tweaking it a little bit and making it our own. I'm starting off with two cups of barbecue sauce. It has to be Baby Ray's, y'all. If you ain't doing Baby Ray's, what are you doing? You ain't doing craft, are you? Y'all better not be doing craft barbecue. I said I never had a jalapeno in my life, and I stand by that, but my memory is like a 10-minute long memory span, so I don't remember what I ate this morning, let alone what I ate my whole life. But I can't ever remember eating a jalapeno, so I was not about to go that route. So when in doubt, you choose pepperoncini. Don't ask me the difference between a pepperoncini and a banana pepper. I have no idea. They look and smell the same. I have no clue. I have asked myself. I've Googled it and it's told me and I forgot <laughs> I forgot what it told me <laughs> my memory y'all but I know from taste that even though they do look and sort of smell similar they taste totally different pepperoncini has one of them punch you in the face sort of tastes and it really makes a recipe when you put it in there you know it's in there it's got a trademark taste in it so I'm sloppily somewhat dicing these up I was supposed to dice them up I was actually supposed to use a can I think an eight ounce can of jalapenos but since I didn't use jalapenos I had a jar of pepperoncinis in the fridge and they were whole pepperoncinis so I was like I'm gonna dice these up it doesn't really look like I did a good job dicing them up but I cut them up nonetheless and I used them in place of the jalapenos I used about half of a small jar of the whole pepperoncinis so I used quite a bit but I wanted to make sure it gave it a punch like I know the jalapenos would because for some reason I don't know what they taste like but I know they pack a punch that tells me at some point in my life I probably did eat one I just forgot about it <laughs> girlfriend also wanted me to cook up bacon and then crumble it and put it in there I just got the real bacon pieces great value and used half the bag and I tossed it in there on top of everything I cut up an onion and diced as best as I could it's really blindly chopping around until I get them in little chunks <laughs> but half of an onion not a whole onion half of an onion if I had been thinking I would have used my chopper because I cherish that thing it dices everything up so perfectly I could never dream of actually manually dicing up something as well as that chopper does so if I'd have been thinking I would use that but for some reason I only think of things in hindsight while I'm sitting here editing <laughs> that's why sometimes when y'all ask me why I didn't do something or why I did do something I've already asked myself that question while editing it and watching this before you guys <laughs> i tossed that on top of everything this is basically a dump and go crock pot meal i add some worcestershire tail sauce just like a swoosh 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 and that's it and then two tablespoons of garlic the recipe called for like three garlic cloves minced and i didn't really know what that meant so i figured two tablespoons kind of sounds the same <laughs> So I went with it and then I did a half a cup of brown sugar. I had a cup thing here so you, that's why you see me only fill it halfway full. I did a half a cup of it, tossed that all in the crock pot and cooked it on high for five hours. I went a little bit longer like 25 minutes and it was super tender. Turn Shane was that necessary? <laughs> was that necessary? Were you trying to get a good shot or what? Oh my, <laughs> that's what you get. That is what you get. Oops. What are you doing? Oh, that is genius. First of all, let's just all agree on the fact that Shane is a genius by doing this. <laughs> I've mentioned the epoxy bubbles several times in the last few videos. This is what I'm talking about. Those drips you see there, they're literal bubbles like mini icicles. That happens when you do the flood coat on an epoxy project. You can see here, I talk about it here in a little bit, on the right side where the sink 
corner is it looks fine and on the left side it looks almost greenish yellow i talk about that here in a few minutes but right now the focus is sending these icicles down this is gonna be a little more trick here uh -huh. Sanding, it worked on the areas where it was more open, but when we got right here where the sink cabinet is and where the dishwasher is, we couldn't sand it without damaging either the dishwasher or the cabinets, and we didn't want to do either of those. So Shane tried to go through here and, and sand as best as he could, but it still wasn't working out like it should. Right here, you can kind of see the concern look on Shane's face. He's like, Rena, this ain't working. We're getting the front there, but I can't get back in there without damaging something. So we were a little bit worried because manually hands sanding it wasn't working it wasn't putting a dent in these epoxy icicles so he's looking around to see if he can come up with something that can get these off without maybe damaging something like the sander and that's when he pulls out another power tool if you're not new here you know how much this makes me nervous <laughs> when i saw him pull out a saw i think that's what a jigsaw or a jiggle saw something it's a jiggle saw when he pulled out the jiggle saw i was like oh no because that saw makes you jiggle i was like oh no because this thing is powerful but i should have trusted him like i should most 99.9 .9 percent of the time because he knows what he's doing and his brain is so creative that he can come up with stuff and it literally almost always works and who am i to question his decision with power tools whenever i can't even remember righty tighty lefty loosey when screwing something in with a screwdriver when i remember that and say it out loud yep your girl is humbled i'll sit down now <laughs> i'll be quiet now <laughs> but this worked until we got up to these bubbles which i had accidentally painted over and it didn't work so well. So he had to do, do a different method, but he still used that saw. He just had to go in at an angle to get those off. We're pulling out the stove so we can lift it up and make it even with the countertops. This has been bugging the heck out of me for some reason. I hyper focus on stuff all the time, and this was one of my hyper fixations. Then the last two weeks, I did not like the fact that the stove was lower than the countertop. So Shane lifted it up for me while we're in here doing stuff and we use my phone as a leveler. FYI, if you have an iPhone, you can use it as a leveler and it works really well. Like it works perfectly. Shane uses my phone on literally everything. Yeah, he says he doesn't like iPhone. Pull out your Android then, Shane. Pull out your Android. It's time to get this seam caulked. Sing one of your uh, YouTube songs. I can be a fighter if you want, if you mm -hmm. want. I could be a fighter. I could be a fighter if you want. I could be a fighter. If you want. All the way that I feel, yeah, I know that it's real. Cause I can get it. Uh, and I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> we sound like bullfrogs. I just say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know I want him, nah, 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 nah. I just say, yeah, 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 yeah. this one little canal and that's where I'm getting my paint from because 
if y'all missed the video where Shane covered up my beautiful pure white paint from Sherwin Williams, we're gonna very just very expensive paint. We're not Williams going to with a twenty five dollar bucket of glidden uh, mixable. I think is this this ain't even white. All I it's did. All I did was was so. Uh, okay, I'm, you're not letting me explain myself. I'm dipping into the canal, and I'm looks a more paint. like a pond, not a canal. And I'm a painting. You're Rena Ross. We're gonna use this to stabilize the shelving we're about to put down here. Y'all gave me so many good ideas, so many good ideas for this area behind me here. The only thing is. I think y'all believe in us too much <laughs> because somebody was like, you could do a spice rack, but you could make it like go back in there. I think we I'm, could. I'm actually a little offended that you said that they're putting too much faith in us because no, I'm sitting here no, like, no, I could no, do no, that. No, no, not you, me. I, mean, I, I can't design something like that. You could absolutely build something like you that. You can design something. Like you are I you can. are smart. So I was thinking. So like, I'm telling rack. you right now, if you had lived like. 8,000 years ago, there is no doubt in my mind God would have been like, hey, Noah, here's Rena. She's going to help design the boat. But anyways, uh, so I was listening to uh, all y'all had so many good ideas. Trash so cans. Ideas. And trash cans. Somebody yeah. said put a trash can in there, and we thought about doing that. Lazy Susan. bought that like $70 trash can. Oh, it hurts to even say that. <laughs> I always wanted a stainless steel trash can, and the last one I got out of my dad's basement. That was a pretty space. nice one. He, he spit dip in it. Like, yeah, it that's was, true. There, I had to wash skull off of it so much because my dad is a huge dipper, a big dipper. <laughs> and he had it in his crawl space. It wasn't a basement. It's like a crawl space that you crawl underneath his house. The floor's dirt, right? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a basement. It's just unfinished. But the floor's dirt. I had that one for the longest time, and it apparently smelled like skull. <laughs> but, but he let me have that one out of his crawl space, and I loved it. I'm getting it. Don't point at stuff. <gasps> See what you made me do. It lasted for a little bit, but then I had to get rid of it because it had a, it was broken and there was no lid to it. So we were having to be careful around this one area of it because the stainless still had rusted on it. Oh yeah, I forgot it about was that. Like, it was a hazard. <clears throat> so as much as I wanted a stainless steel trash can, it wasn't worth it being a hazard. So I'm, I'm in love with this. It was an investment. You finally got one and it's an R2-D2. <laughs> I've been eyeing on Amazon and it was like over $100 and I cannot justify paying $100 for a trash can. <laughs> for something I put my trash in. And so it was really hard to justify $60 because that's just a $40 difference. But I literally have been thinking about it for years and that's not exaggerating. How many years have I been talking about getting a stainless steel trash can? Uh, since that I knew you. The lid list. That I knew you. Because you've always wanted one. A long, long, long time. So I got it and I don't want to hide it in a, in a trash can area. That's such a good idea though. There's also the thing too that if a trash can goes back there, you have to worry that if kiddos or something overfill it, then you got trash falling back in there and, and stuff. Know we do stuff like that. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Do well, that. if something gets lost back in there. Yeah. What, what if moon pie over gets back there? The of a mouse and stuff. It, it wouldn't be a mouse, it'd be a moon pie. Um, we're already dealing with the fly. It's oh, shame. I got that settled. Shane bought something called a, what is it? It's a Ziva. Um, actually, one of our friends actually mentioned it, and I went and I looked it up video. on, uh, it was either the last video or the one before, I can't remember, but it, um, they were talking about it, and I was like, all right, I'm going to look it up, and that's how I found out about it, and I looked it up. Y'all so, are so good. thank you for that. I've got one ordered, and it's on its way. So, he's going to hopefully have the fly situation, but we don't want a mouse situation. So, we're just not responsible. Did you tell him about that time I caught a mouse? To have... Where? Oh, here? Yeah. No, probably not. Oh, okay. You want to tell them? Oh, uh, yeah. I set a bucket up, and I, I fixed a ramp going up to the top of the bucket, and then I set a paper plate up there with a little piece of cheese on it so that it would be lured, and guess what? That didn't work. So you know what I did? I took your old uh, vegetable chopper <laughs> and I set it up with a little stick holding it up. Have the pieces to it. Yeah, and I put a little piece of cheese on it, and I caught the mouse that way. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I like how I had to start the story with the elaborate one that didn't work. Yeah. That was the one that the internet said would work and it didn't. So then I like relied on my instincts and I created my own trap. So while that was a good idea, I didn't want to hide my trash can and then I didn't feel comfortable designing something like a pull out spice rack. And I also like for my spices to be like on display. I like them to be on display because I like to see them. And at the old house, Shane, that was one of the first things he built was a spice rack. It was, wasn't it? And it was so good. Oh, it was it, not. That it, thing it was was, was a little crooked. Some of the rungs left. weren't all the way straight. It was there when we left. Like I'm pretty sure the left side was longer than the right side. <laughs> So I was thinking about stuff to put there, and then you guys were helping me out. And when one of y'all said a pull-out spice rack, I was like, not a pull-out, but we could do something cute with just a regular spice rack. Like a little spice rack there, right there beside the oven. Easily um, grabbable. Easily accessible, right there open so I can see what spices I have. And it also clears up that cabinet up there, which would have been a spice cabinet if I didn't have one of these. So what so, will that cabinet up there be now? The possibilities are endless. What did that muffin say? Oh, yeah. muffin, but possibilities, muffin baby. But possibilities. So that's the vibe. So what we're going for with building this spice rack is I want it to look like it's part of the cabinetry, like custom. That's kind a of. cool word, cabinetry. So I'm cabinetry. not going to do a stained open shelving sort of spice rack. I was going to do that. I was going to stain the shelves rather than paint them. But I think I just want it to flow with the cabinetry as it is right now white and then you guys will kind of see my little pop of something with the spice jars that i got themselves i searched for the spice jars i wanted and finally found the ones that i wanted that i think is going to complement this area really well it might it might not i sanded down and painted this two by four white to be the other supporting side to the shelving for the spice rack and then i'm going to use some extra wood that we had laying around it's like kind of trim wood laying around for the shelves itself. So I don't need to. Oh hair my ball. goodness. That's a moon hair. The coolest part about this spice rack is it only cost me $25 because I had everything but the spice jars to do this. We have a random pig in our backyard on a daily basis now. Don't know whose it is. It's literally a miniature potbelly pig and it lives here. It literally lives here. Of the time. It just walks up and says hi whenever the dogs are outside. Says hi to the dogs. Says hi to the chickens. And me and Shane are standing here talking, waiting on the paint to dry. And it just casually walks across the yard. <laughs> We're looking at it in the window like. <laughs> we need to come up with a name for it if it's going to hang around that much. I've been calling it babe. Who's just letting our pig run around now? There he goes, off into the <laughs> wild blue yonder. Hi, Wilbur. He's in there. Where are you going? Babe! Look at you, like, living on a whole farm. Gunshots in the background and everything. <laughs> You just wait till Christmas season when the banjos come out. I don't even know where they're coming from. One time I was out here feeding chicken, and I tell you what, there was a blue person out here had one fork in one hand, a knife in the other, looking at me like I was Christmas dinner. I looked at him and I said, "No, sir, you can go on." <laughs> you just came in with up with that out of your butt. <laughs> it was actually out of my mouth. <laughs> hey guys, love you. Love you. Y'all having a good day, Laverne, Shirley, huh? Y'all having a good day? Y'all are so pretty. Oh my goodness. Sanji. You're about to see a National Geographic special. <laughs> Look how big he is, though. Mm -hmm. Big boy. Look how fun he is. I love the green and blue in his, in his feathers. Look at her hop skipping. I love how they run. They like do they the Naruto like run. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know if it's a gun, it might be a firework. Every single coffee, every single breath.
Papo ni ni mero. Hey, that ain't gonna go through that. <laughs> okay, wait. Give them this grand idea you're telling me about. I'm gonna take that leg off because I don't have it attached yet. I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna attach the shelving. You think that's a good idea? Yeah, that way. Uh, would I be saying it if I didn't think it was a good well, idea? Well, I mean, you also thought it was a good idea to run a nail through the middle of it and it Listen popped back out tomorrow. and almost knocked you out. Later tomorrow. <laughs> It's gonna be all right. Okay. Baby, what did I tell you? What do you have to do? Believe. Believe. The pig is literally back in the yard. Eating the chicken food. Eating the chicken food. He is literally in the yard, just wagging his tail, having him a grand old time. Who is missing the pig? And why ain't they looking for it? He is here every day. Like every day. He disappears at night. Don't know where he goes. Can't catch him because he's friendly, but not that friendly. Yeah, thought like, about Get away from me. Yeah, I thought about catching him and like putting posters up or something, but I can't even get a good picture of him because he won't sit still. He's out there eating the chicken food right now. Is chicken food even healthy for pigs? Probably not. I know our goats aren't supposed to eat them. Yeah, go, it makes goats bloated, but I, golly. I don't know about pigs. His little tail's just a wagon. Little old pig in the dead of night. Stealing my chicken feed. He's gonna have to pay back in some way. Hey Siri. Mm -hmm. Why do pigs' tails wag? Pigs wag their tails for various reasons. Including when they are frustrated, distressed, or intimidated. Oh, yes. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be something happy. So he's frustrated or intimidated. I thought it was gonna be because he was happy. Come on, get happy. So he's just out there eating his feelings, basically. Yeah, pretty much. I feel him. Are you not putting them together with the thing? No. When did you change your mind? Uh, when you made it sound stupid. I did not make it sound stupid. I just, it, I questioned it. You question everything I do? No. I do have better cutters because those are just not made for that. I just, I mean. So we're not doing it that way now? No. Does that look crooked to y'all? You have crushed my confidence. Uh, Congratulations. He said I crushed his confidence. Congratulations. But does that look crooked to y'all? Who's going to tell him? I ain't going to do it. Y'all going to tell him? <laughs> I ain't going to do it. Just mention it. Like, hey, Shane, that top one was just a little bit crooked. <laughs> He'll probably fix it. Dude. My goofy face looking at me. Bro! That pig's back. <laughs> He's literally walking out there. Look, I don't know if y'all can see him because the exposure. He's just happily walking like. He's like, I live on a farm, <laughs> yay! I'm a farm pig. Sanji and the chickens are looking at him like. <laughs> we moved to the country. How are you? We used to just have random like escaped convicts and stuff in our yards in the trailer park. Now we got random pig, random pigs in our yard.
guess what we just noticed? We have green countertops. So you remember whenever the epoxy messed up right here? Shane messed it up. <laughs> Excuse me. Not to blame or point fingers. I didn't mess it up. You leaned on it and all of your black shirt got that onto it, up. it did. But when I put the other on, I did exactly No, as no. Listen, you, you messed it up me. twice because he bent over and his shirt stuck to it and left a bunch of fuzzies, black fuzzies that we couldn't fix when it was tacky and then he went to fix it for me and it never got sticky so i went in later and had to repaint it again for the third time and i messed it up the last time by putting lacquer on it and apparently lacquer turns green i don't think you can really tell on camera you might but it it's green it's yeah, it's green, green. he says it's yellow green yellow birds of a feather same thing so now i don't know what we're gonna do about that this is gonna be the 50 billion time that we've changed this you just gotta believe, we'll fix it. Too many times, too many times I've been drifting away. Like a shadow when the sun hiding from the ocean in a bay. Let's keep the fire burning, baby, till I'm coming home. Then maybe I won't have the need to let the regular buns with Kobe Jack cheese and some french fried onions and they were amazing. Shane loved these. He ate three of them. Three. I searched high and low for spice jars just like these. I wanted the labels to be on the front and on the top and I wanted the top screw off part to be a wooden sort of texture and these were perfect. And the front labels being white and the top being black. I loved that so much for some reason. I think the brand was Dimra or Dimbra, something like that. I'll try to link them either through YouTube or in the description box below, but I wanted the wood color on the top to match my beam work and it did perfectly. Mine came with a chalk marker and a little funnel. This feels like fancy paper. I feel like I just got a letter from King Arthur. This little sheet of paper that I was showing you that I got from King Arthur, <laughs> it was like a list of all the different spices. And then these are the little circle ones that go on the top. It has every spice imaginable, even Lowry's uh, spice. It says like Lowry's salt or something like that for seasoned salt. But it also has customizable ones. So you can go in and write something, especially like on the black with the chalk marker or the white. I think it has areas where you can write in pen, like a specific spice if they don't have it on here. But they have virtually every single spice I could even think of. Granted, I don't have a huge knowledge of spices because I don't know how to cook with a bunch of them, but they even had like celery flakes and things like that. But like I said, if they didn't have it, then I can customize it. If I find one later, I can customize it and write what I need to on there. Oh, that's why they give you a funnel. Did you guys know that they send you a funnel to actually use? <laughs> make your life easier i got the 24 pack for 24 90 something i believe i don't know if i've already said that it was basically 25 bucks and it came with 24 spice jars with the lids it came with all of those stickers so many of them and all of the top stickers too the stickers are numbered so you can easily find them so if you find one you can easily find the other one like it is filled to the top That sucker is me in a girdle. It's about to blow. Okay, let me find the garlic one before I forget. Let's see. And they put it in alphabetical order. Oh my gosh, they're so smart. Thank you, thank you. Brand, whatever you are, thank you. The font and everything on the front white stickers, I love so much. It just gives it like this clean, just minimal sort of look. And I love that. It doesn't look cluttered on the spice racks. And that was what I was worried about. 
it's not gonna be centered because it's me but it's pretty i did try to center it as best as i could but the top circle stickers were really hard to get centered and i used one of them as sort of like a what something to go by whenever i put the stickers on the other one so i would usually here i do i'm doing the first one but usually i will lay one beside it and then try to put it in the same position i have it in just so it looks cleaner on the racks these look fancy this is a messy job and i forgot how much i didn't like doing it at the single wide when i got all the spice jars at the single wide it's the first time i ever filled up spice jars and i made a mess i had that video somewhere back it's years back but i made a mess and i feel like i got deja vu with this one because i didn't learn my lesson and i ain't, I ain't got no better at it either <laughs> This took me so long to do, but thankfully Nanny gave me a surprise visit. So she just walked in and I was like, yes, now I can take a break. <laughs> so I got a little bit more done, but then me and her went out to the porch and sat and watched the chickens and stuff. I was like, I'm taking a break from this. It took me a while. The only con to these, and I'm being so serious, the only con to these is knowing I'll have to do this again. <laughs> I'll have to fill these up again. They look so good and I love them and they're so like aesthetic and pretty, but knowing I have to do this again one day when I run out of spices, it's going to make me want to use less spices, which defeats the whole purpose. Watch me. Watch me. When we're doing cooking videos and stuff, I'll be using less spices. I'll be doing like little sprinkle, sprinkle here, little sprinkle, sprinkle there, and it, you know, you'll know why. You'll know why. <laughs>
people who didn't watch this video is gonna be like, go girl, watching your salt intake, your sodium intake, you go girl, but you who are here right now, you're gonna know the truth. You're gonna know exactly why. I'm just doing a little sprinkle, sprinkle here, a little sprinkle, sprinkle there. It's to save on spices so I don't have to do this again for a really long time. Or, or I could give it as a chore to somebody and make it like a high point chore because I do a point chore system. Ooh, I could do that. That's how you pull off whole bottles. Show me her room. She said she's been working and it's spotless. <laughs> Except for the boy Jesse's stuff. Yeah. Except. Except. I love you, baby. Sissy. That looks so pretty. Is that your little spice finger? Yeah. Oh, your little jars. And it is a nightmare and a half. Keeps from getting it still in. Yeah. That's like my little spice truck over there. How cute it looks. What is it? My little spice rack over there. Oh, that's the and Shane built that. Yeah. Boy, well, I'll tell you, he's a man of many talents. <laughs> Oh, look at her pineapple. That's cute. You don't eat that, do you? Yeah, I do. Where did you get your look. necklace? That's cute. Um, paparazzi. That's pretty. Yeah. Pretty good. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Is that the wrong it's stuff? Not, it's overflowing. It's on a diet counter. It's orange, nice <laughs> looking. Thing. Oh, my counter's turned green. What? I used lacquer. I rolled when Nanny called my pineapple pretty and said, you ain't gonna eat that, are you? <laughs> like, I just bought a pineapple out of the produce section for her decor. I love her so much. <laughs> Nanny was amazed at all these spices because Nanny actually only cooks with, like, a small number of spices. I mean, salt, pepper, and seasoned salt. That's usually what she uses. She doesn't know, like, how to use a lot of paprika and stuff like that. She just uses the very, very basic. Tell me how a girlfriend still makes her stuff taste immaculate using just regular salt and pepper. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a talent. This nanny makes mashed taters that make you say hallelujah. They are so good. They're the best mashed taters you will ever put in your mouth. I'm not kidding. My kids can eat gallons of them. They beg her to cook that whenever she's feeling up and good enough to cook something because nanny while she is you know feeling really sick lately and she is having a hard time she wants to keep going she don't want to sit down and she doesn't want to give up so she keeps moving and she keeps doing stuff and she keeps cooking to keep herself going and I admire that because it takes a lot for somebody to be in that much pain that level of pain and to say no I'm not gonna sit down I'm gonna keep going so she will cook the mashed taters if she feels like it and she'll she literally the other day she made me potato soup and brought it by and I was like nanny you're not supposed to be on your feet she said I gotta keep going and gotta keep doing stuff and I hushed because nanny knows her body better than I do I know a lot of people physically can't make themselves keep going and especially if you're older and you've lived a life and you've worked all your life and you are your body's just tired you've wore it down by you know providing for people and for yourself and taking care of your family and all these things and a lot of times it's not an option to keep going sometimes you have to slow down and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that I love to see people elderly people up and moving but I really love to see elderly people resting and taking it slow because it's like you worked for this you guys made it through some of the toughest times in history you guys earned the rest I love to see elderly people just taking it slow because they deserve it look at this spice rack oh my gosh I love it I'm trying to put just a few on each shelf because I don't want it to look too crowded and cluttered. So I aimed to put five on each shelf and that made 20. So I didn't use four of the spice jars, but I have somewhere else that I'm gonna try to use those. You guys will see later, it'll be a DIY coming up. But I tried to put five on each shelf and I tried to categorize them in levels of me using them. So on the bottom, put a lot of nutmeg, cinnamon, stuff like that. In the middle one, it's a lot of steak seasonings. Third one down is ones I don't really use, and the top ones with stuff like salt, pepper, stuff like that that I go for a lot. I liked the way that it looked with spaces in between them, more so than it being up together and crowded. So it just makes it, like I said earlier, it gives it a more minimal look and a clean, fresh look, and that is really what I was going for. I wanted it to stand out, and I feel like this makes it stand out. Oh, 
love it so much. I love it so much. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning. If not, whatever it is, wherever you're at, know that I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all in the next one.